I want to thank you all. First of all, I'm, I'm very grateful for to be allowed to, to have this opportunity to speak with you all. It is, it is, it is uh, not only an opportunity, but a pleasure to share what uh, Sage Clan has been able to accomplish. As you know, we, uh, it was started due to the drug crisis, mainly by the, uh, the Native community, the organizations. And uh, however, everybody jumped in, not just, not just the Friendship Center, not just Apokasa, not just, but LPS were right in there and uh, City Hall was right, they saw the importance of it. And it was, some, it was a demographic that had to be addressed. And to this day, it is still something that is very important to address. It is still, I'm not saying failing, there is still ignorance in the uh, how much the blood reserve, the indigenous population, affects Lethbridge. It has to be addressed. So that is of great importance of understanding what happened. I need to be in Skasi, my Hiki. My identity only began when I got away from alcohol and drugs 11 years ago. My brothers and sisters were all A students, did well in the school system, wherever they went, and they were athletic. None of them amounted to anything, as you would say, and what society expects and it'd be, to become, go to college, get a university, or get a developing trait. None of them did. It's happening to my children also. Very talented, very artistic. I'm artistic. I don't, you don't even see my artwork. There's something wrong there. Something that even I, at my age, I'm 61. And I'm only, 11 years ago, I realized, hey, I'm Blackfoot. I'm Ghana, a Ghana. There, there is something that needs to be understood about the demographic of, of Lethbridge needs to, we are part of the community. And we are, we are, we are a vital part of this community to, to help. Right now, we're mired in drugs and addictions. And it's still happening, and it's only getting worse. And so that crisis, Sage Clan began, was a, was a cry for help. And it's, that cry is still here. We are still asking for some understanding. We're not asked to be, to be uh, treated special, but understand where we come from. I left high school with six scholarships out of high school. I went, I got offers to Santa Fe, New Mexico, Indian, uh, Institute of American Indian Art. And the other offer was St. Francis Xavier University in Nova Scotia. I didn't have the guidance. I should have went south to the States and develop my artistic skills. But I didn't have it. I got lured because of basketball. They even offered me an art program where I could do artwork. What, it, what happened? I went down there and my, they, they, they put aside some funding from my, uh, from my uh, uh, scholarship money to pay some, uh, what do you call nuns? from the, the church to teach me how to paint. There was no program there. But I was there for basketball mainly. But more, more importantly, and was 
I wasn't ready. You don't take somebody from where I grew up in residential school and for what I faced being indigenous, it didn't, wasn't in me. I lost it. You take a native from here, 3,000 miles away, and throw them in there and expect. Um, residential school is real. My father went to, to the residential school. My mother, the other one. Now I know why they are. They became who they were. I saw the loss of identity. My father uh, was one of the first to attend uh, uh, in Utah, in Provo, Utah. He, he, uh, he went to a tech school. And he could, he could build a house, everything, right? From foundation, to electrical, to everything, he could do that. The kind of industries you see, the big orange building was supposed to be a, a, a major project that could have, my father was gonna head that, but drinking God in his way. Not only that, he was an artist. Not only that, I did not realize he was a boxing coach. Not I didn't realize he was a mentor of so many people. He died in his drinking. He literally drowned in a river drinking. And he was very talented. It is real. It is real. Tonight is the wake service for my daughter. Tomorrow I bury my daughter from an overdose. Last year I lost my granddaughter. Just prior to, I lost my oldest son and my brother who was my father. I did not, can't say I really knew my father. My oldest brother became my father. And he died from addiction. <coughs> A few months before, I lost my brother in Gull Gardens. He didn't even drink. He didn't, he didn't do drugs, he drank. The level of drugs that was found in his system, fentanyl, he was hot-shotted. It's happening on these streets. See, in, in do, walking with Sage Clan, I myself have been out there longer than five years in the existence of Sage Clan. I've been there 10 years practically out on the streets. I've never left the streets. I've lived on the streets here in Lethbridge and in Calgary. And I st I'm still here. Whether the good Lord put me there or not, for a reason, maybe it is. And so, could you keep track of minutes here? 15 minutes? Okay. That, that, so I, I guess I'm addressing the importance of understanding what really happens. And I'm only one person. I'm not the only one this has happened to. I'm not the only one burying their kids. I am only one of many that are experiencing this. Currently, I have so many family members phoning me, and not even just family, not, not, not just Blackwood, but white people are phoning. Could you find my daughter? Could you locate her? And what little we've been able to accomplish has been, is, is great to look at, to understand, to uh, take some time to understand how important we are as a community organization. The eyes and ears of what goes on on the street. I started as an addict, alcoholic, marginalized person. Six of us started Sage Clan. We just went out and walk. We got tired of the meetings. No, we're going out and walk. We went out and we started walking. This started from there. Misunderstandings happened, suspicions, not trust. You know, what are they doing? 
Even LPS were suspicious. What, why are we? We're not, an indig we're not an American Indian movement. We're a community. But because we're indigenous and we're also, and I'll say it, they were suspicious of us. What was your motives? What's your real motives of going out there? Not realizing four of us were on age. Two, one was still staying at the shelter, the other one was couch surfing. That was the beginning of Sage Clan. It started from there. Gradually, people started joining, and it, it got. That's how it was supposed to start. Understand where it starts from. There's a reason for why it started that way. Don't be suspicious. This is real, and it's happening for our people. But it, now, what I'm seeing, it's, 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 it's escalating to where it don't matter. If it, it, it's, it's more than just the Blackwood people. And my brother being hot-shotted has happened more than you realize amongst the population out there, what you call a hot shot. And these things are my experiences. I have the trust of the population out there. I can walk into a dealer's house. Glass, oh, it's just Mark. He knows I'm Sage Clan. And I don't divulge, I don't go to the police and tell them, this, is, this guy's selling. No, I will not do that. What's more important are, are getting the people out of there that don't want to be there, but have been forced in a way to be there that have no, had no way else of knowing how to live. In five years, we have succeeded, and now I can safely say I have had to make sure that I'm okay to say this, in all honesty, 21 people have, are now on the streets out here. And I don't know how we did it, Sage Clan, but they got away from this drug that just grasps a person's heart, mind, body, and soul, keeps them in, more than alcohol, keeps them mired in a being that is just not them. They're not themselves, total loss. And so, these 21 people, I'm very proud of them to see them not there. We're planting seeds now at the, at the shelter. It is important that we get the time to do this. Believe me, politicians, help us. Don't hold us back by your policies anymore or your money worries. It's, it doesn't need much. It doesn't need great amount of money. It doesn't need huge housing things. It's the community to get out there and, and, and connect with the people. Give them back choice. Give them back the ability to feel something. The smallest little feeling is that seed you plant for them to decide. Anything, any small decision is good. That's how serious this drug is. With that, you know, I guess this is kind of asking you all that this Sage Clan is community. It's, it's, it was given in the Blackfoot way. I did not realize Sage Clan was formed in the way we form what we call societies. Right now, we're not a holy society, we're not a sacred society, we're a community society. We had societies back in the day where the people got together and said, you people take care of this. And that's how we formed. It comes from the heart, from this land. But it's given to Lethbridge, not just to me, not just to the Bloods, not just to indigenous, it's given to this community. And that's the spirit of it. And that's how it should be handled. That TP that has that Sage Clan logo, that's given to Lethbridge. I hold it in the traditional ways. I'm the holder of it. However, it would be transferred 
It belongs to Lethbridge. It belongs to this community. The yellow is a, he is a healing color. There's a story to that teepee. And that's in our culture. That's a contribution from the spirit of this land. It's real, but we, we are a part. We aren't a salute. We are, are just a part. And we're crying for that help. Understand our people. Understand why we're burying our children still now. We were burying our uncles and aunties and that grandpa for two alcohols, but now it's our children we're burying. With this, I'll leave it at that. You know, I'm quite serious about what I say. However, there's a lot of good that's coming. That's why the ladies here are here to, exp to explain what they experienced walking with it. You, dis you barely scratch the surface, but somebody's going to come up and ask you quietly, I want help with this. They ask quietly. A lot more can be done. So I'm asking, you know, in every way, in any way, anybody with your influences to help this community find ways that the community can help enhance, enhance Sage Clan even, or if you want to name it something else. It does not be Sage Clan. However, we've had, I've, one thing, the university students have been very instrumental in helping us just coming out and walking. We have, we have doctors and lawyers that have gone away to school now that walked with us. They're, they said, we'll come back, we're gonna help Sage Clan. I feel proud about that, you know, because they were touched by what they saw, the reality, the humanity of these people. They saw a lot of them want out of that lifestyle. They're not all the same. That, I'll let you, I have a, uh, a couple of the patrollers here to, just to explain what they experienced. Thank you. Hi, I'm Karen Smith Miles, and I've been patrolling with Sage Clan for almost three years now. Um, I initially got involved because I saw a call out on Facebook. Uh, with Mark inviting people to walk with the Sage Clan. And I had heard so much in the news and read so much in the papers about the crisis that was happening downtown, and there was so much negativity surrounding it that I felt like I needed to be a part of the change. I needed to see for myself what was happening out there. And originally I thought, oh, I'll go out now and again, you know, once every couple of months. I now go out three times a week. If I'm at home, I'm out walking with Sage Clan. What has struck me is the beauty of the walk, the compassion that the volunteers show, but also that the compassion goes both ways. I experience nothing but gratitude from the people that are on the street. And we're giving a very simple lunch just a sandwich, maybe some orange slices, some chips, nothing big. But people are so grateful for what they're given. They're forgiving when at times we don't have enough to go around. And the main thing is that it's just about so much more than a sandwich. That sandwich is really just a bridge to build trust and to build a relationship and to, to open up communication with people so that when they're ready to make a change in their lives, when they need help, they'll ask for it. For a long time, when I first joined Sage Clan, I thought, I don't know if I've got anything to offer these people. I don't have a background in addictions. Um, I was a teacher. And what I discovered that what I did to have, have to offer was an ear and kindness. And now when I go out, the simplest phrase, how you're doing, how are you doing, brings honesty and it allows people to tell you what they need, where they are in their life and how you can help. It really has been a life-changing thing for me to join Sage Clan. I've learned not to judge, and Mark often will, will tell us, don't judge, you don't know the whole story. 
So we hear sound bites on the news or things on the radio. It's really only part of the story. So I would invite you to join us on our walks, support us in any way that you can. It's a powerful community organization. When I look at the idea that we know that 21 people are off the streets because of the support Sage Clan has given them, I think if a small group of volunteers can make a difference for 21 people, what kind of a difference could the entire community make when we start to see people for who they are? Thanks very much. need to be even lower for me, sorry. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Miranda Leibel. Uh, I'm an assistant professor at the University of Lethbridge. Uh, I'm also relatively new to Lethbridge and I'm very new to Sage Clan. Uh, so we don't bring the kind of experience uh, and knowledge that Mark and Karen bring, but I have been going out on patrols for a couple of months and there are reasons why I keep going. And a, a lot of those reasons have to do with the relationships that I see when I'm out on a patrol, both in terms of um, patrollers amongst themselves, the kinds of communities that form there, the communities between patrollers and the people we serve, relationships amongst the people we serve. It's such an important and valuable reminder of how much difference community can make in initiating change. And this is something that uh, I've thought about a lot in the last few years as I've been teaching students throughout the COVID pandemic. I get a lot of comments from students saying, you know, we're learning about all these hard things. And then we sit down and we write a paper and you read it and then that's it. That's all that happens. And when I had a student say that to me, it, it really made me sit down and think, what are we doing here? What do we think? learning about social justice is going to do if we aren't also acting the things that we're learning. Um, and so part of my inclination to walk with Sage Clan was that I'm new to Lethbridge. I have an obligation to this community to be part of initiating change, of being part of positive community building efforts. And like Karen, I thought maybe I don't actually have very much to offer. Um, I don't have any specialized skills in areas of addictions, of counseling, uh, of crisis intervention. Um, I'm just some lady. <laughs> uh, but it, it really dawned on me that you know the special skills that you need are also skills that you learn while you're doing it. Uh, you learn those skills of patience, of kindness, uh, of crisis intervention, but also being able to just offer your time, uh, offer whatever resources you have. We all have something we can offer, um, whether or not it's a big transformative thing uh, or even just a small piece of that, right? We can all sort of work together in instigating change and what's so beautiful about Sage Clan is that it is such a reminder of how much power we have in our communities. When we're doing things collaboratively and communally, we actually can make incredible amounts of change. Uh, so I would follow suit to just encourage folks to come out on a patrol, um, join us, uh, donate whatever kinds of contributions you're able to offer. Um, and yeah, thank you. This is the opportunity now to ask some questions. So as always, I know a lot of you know this and how this works, but where Canood is, the one and only, we are going to be lining up on this side. I would invite, please invite the three of you from Sage Clan to come up here, and then the individual will come. Say their question to the team and then you will answer it. And I will be here to support you. So if I could get some folks to start lining up because this is a really engaging and important topic. Thank you. I'm so happy you're here. Come on in. Too far. 
Uh, hi, I'm Maria Fitzpatrick. Mark, Hello. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so I have a question that I think I know the answer to, but I'm going to ask you anyway. Most volunteers uh, in the city have to go through like a CPIC check and uh, police background, whatever. I don't expect that the SAGE clan does, but would you answer that for me? Because I'd certainly like to help out. Mm -hmm. Well, for one thing, uh, I had a record when I started Sage Clan, okay? And I was fresh out of the jail system, okay? And I was still an addict and an alcoholic, all right? So, uh, does that answer your question? It does. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Bev Mundell Atherstone, <clears throat> thank you so much for each of you for coming here today and sharing your stories about your involvement in, Shades, in the Sage Clan. I have two questions, and maybe they're for you, Mark. Um, could you explain to us what is a hot shot? And the second question is, um, in the summer when it gets hot, in the winter when it gets cold, where do you think, as a community, we can provide shelter for people who end up on the streets, end up um, trying to ha create a place for themselves in what is called encampments. The city doesn't like encampments. They go and they destroy the encampments, throw the people's things in the, in the dump. Uh, what, what do you see that would be the best way for us to help with um, helping to shelter people? Hot shots in that. Thank you. A, a hot shot is a concoction of uh, a, lethal, a lethal dose meant to kill somebody, meant to maim somebody, meant to hurt somebody. It's happening out there. It has happened on a few occasions. I would say for myself, I highly suspect my brother was with the way he drank, who he was, and but that's what, that's a lifestyle out there that happens. It's real, the lifestyle is real out there. It is dangerous where they brought themselves to. They have their own, they have their own laws, unwritten laws amongst each other. And it's, it, it's real. We, it has to be, it has to be stopped somehow, we have to, I, I, I'm going to bring this up. I say somebody has been puzzled, a politician is very puzzled, wanted, wanted me to explain when I said Lethbridge is very solvable. Now what I meant by that was what's going on on the reserve there. Why you have more people coming in and we're getting a lot of younger ones. Crime rate is going up. It's getting worse. The violence is going to get worse. This hot shot is just a symptom, and it literally is fatal, a fatal decision amongst themselves, their justice amongst themselves, this, this, this community that's forming there. So that's a hot shot. We need to get creative in our ways of handling where our homeless and addicted need to go. You know, you hear so many rumors, nobody's saying, all I'm he feeling is just another plan behind the, behind the scenes. Politicians are planning, this is what's best to do. This is what's best for these people. So I hear they're buying some buildings up there by the shelter and gonna make a community there with even uh, transition housing in that area altogether. Is that just rumor? Why can't you be open? transparent about this. Believe me, some of your answers will come from an homeless and addicted person. Listen to them. I'm one of them. I need all your minds, your minds and hearts to help in finding creative solutions to it. I'm not the answer. Just a messenger of what's going on right now. What's coming next? So that hot shot is severe. That's the justice in that community. It's happened more than to more than one person out there. 
So we need community to come to solutions. Where, where do we allow, if, 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 we, if they want the encampments to form around the shelter, well, then you give us the resources and the manpower to do that. Because we don't. For as many addicts we have at the shelter, we have, we've walked off every drug dealer. We don't have any drugs in and around the shelter now. We have succeeded in that. And if you, if you don't think that they don't listen, well, we've been able to put them in one area. They do, they do not surround our people, homeless addicted, do not surround the drugs area. There's only on the east side, the entrance way, the walkway, is where we've, and they've listened. And we thank them that they stay away from the, that area. And so they're on this area. So they do listen. Our people do listen. So with saying that, Find a solution, help, find, help us find a solution. Where do we allow this population to congregate and even to safely use? You're willing to make a building for them to go in, inject and smoke, but then you don't want them outside. You want it behind walls where the community don't see it. They need to breathe, they need to see the sun too. So find an area. But don't put it in one whole, whole area, it's not going to work. It hasn't worked in any other city since Chicago started 60 year, over 60 years ago. It hasn't worked. So let's get creative, Lethbridge. This is our problem. This is not Calgary. It's not Winnipeg. It's not Vancouver. It's not the states. This is Lethbridge. We address our problem here. Put, put these other scenarios out of reach figure out what's going on here and do something community-wise. Thanks. My name is Mike McKegg. Uh, I did uh, a fair bit of patrolling with Sage Climb when we first started until my health kind of changed. Anyways, I would like you guys to tell us something that I think is very important, and that is, I like the, way, the email address where I send a little money every once in a while when I can. And I think that's something that a lot of people in this room can certainly do. Uh, when I was with Sage Clan, we got nothing from any government, uh, city, province, or federal, as far as funding went. Uh, Mark, you can probably let us know if that's still the case. but. Uh, the money and the things that were given out were all from donations. The food uh, was donations and or bought with, with money that was donated by the public. So I'd like to encourage everybody to do that and I'd like you guys to give us an address. So as you can see, there was some discussion about that. Um, we are dependent entirely on donations from the community. Um, so one uh, platform that's available if you wish to make a donation is chuffed.org. Um, and you would look for a Sage Clan Patrol and you can make a donation online through that. So it's chuffed.org. Okay? Thank you. Uh, my name's Ken Haxtell. Um, I'm just another white guy that walks around with the Sage Clan once in a while, Mark and Karen. And, um, and I, I guess uh, what I noticed today here is what, what everyone's been saying. This is a call to action. You know, we can talk about, we can talk about the crisis, we can talk about all these other things here. But the Sage Clan is where you actually do something. And it's really, um, I guess, uh, like has been said, you, you get more out of it 
than 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 you would you would expect when you do this this kind of work. Um, so I think I just thanks for 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 including us, and I would also like to say that it it because. <laughs> Because it's indigenous-led, it seems to it, it, to me it makes makes more sense. I couldn't go out and do this on my own without the Sage Clan as a grounding for it. So again, thank you for coming and explaining this, and I encourage everyone to uh, do what they can, whether it's donations or coming out and walking or just being open to the messages that 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 are coming out of this and and accurate responses to what you hear and see. So. My, name, my name is Terry Shellington, and I have two questions. Uh, I didn't hear you use the words or address it directly, but do you want to comment on the safe consumption site uh, and whether that's a thing of the devil or uh, a benefit to the community? It was very controversial. It's been eliminated. Um, I read between the lines, but I'd like to hear you address it directly. Secondly, we're in the shadows of a provincial election, and is there anything that you think a governing party in the province can and should be doing around this? Maybe you could be specific. Thank you. And thank you very much for coming and, and uh, uh, sharing so much. Uh, first question, the first question, uh, Consumption site, it was, uh, in my own opinion, it was brought up too fast, wasn't ready for it. And again, did not study the effects it would have had, it has, the demographic was not studied. You created more addicts than you did save lives. And there was more workers there than there were addicts at the time. Okay? So you hear I'm very critical of it. I did not say, I do not say we don't need one. The small trailer they have by the shelter does its purpose. Okay, it does its purpose. And the way it was brought out was not, was not ill-timed. They study it more of who and what would use it, even the inhalation. Even the inhalation, I didn't agree with that. And then how much it wasn't studied is one point. They tried to have ceremonies in there. Okay, when it was a bar before, when it was Cook County Saloon, and we had drug pro we had alcohol problems, did they put a ceremonies in the next room? Okay, did they put a ceremonial room where they can go smudge and say, they're, you know, after they come out of just shooting up and then expect them to? No, they didn't do that. All right. We have to study what, what, what has gone on. That's the ignorance that has happened. And, you know, uh, when I say identity, when I say that I just started realizing I'm Blackwood, when I sobered up. Well, a lot of the, our children coming in have that identity loss. They, my children, I spoke that my children, I'm a, the cycle is going on where my children are very talented, very, but yet I have addiction. They're dying of, of addictions. They're race students, they're artists, but they didn't get it, they're not getting anywhere. That's happening to a lot of the children out there, a real identity thing, okay? So that, that consumption site did not, was ill-timed, was not planned properly to what was going on in the community, especially the inhalation. He didn't need the inhalation. Yeah, the injection, that's more dangerous. That's but the inhalation. So I have my, my opinion on it, you know, and the other question uh, I forgot was again, this is Lethbridge. We whoever we elect, let's get it addressed. Let's 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 solve our problem. 
Don't think about Calgary. Don't look at Calgary, what's going on there. What's going on here in Lethbridge? Right here, we, we can only do our own. Let's solve this part, part here, all right? Uh, that's about all I can say. I'm not the greatest politician, you know, to AHS can, can help us better here also in, in, you know, you can't treat all addicts in generally the same. You can't treat them all the same. Lethbridge is solvable because we know each other. I know the individuals out there. I can only go so far in assessing a person and then passing them on to a professional. Okay, we can only do so much. So that coalition, that, uh, that um, um, working together is really important. All the, all the agencies to work together need, needs, needs more collaboration for, uh, for Lethbridge. I, I, you know, we call it city of Lethbridge. I call it just a big, big town just because I know everybody and everybody knows me, especially on the streets. Okay, so a new a new person comes in on the streets, he, he sticks out like a sore thumb. Well, who's that guy? You know, everybody wants to know who he is because we all know each other. Take advantage of that. We're still, it can be solved. A lot, a lot of people can be taken out, encouraged. Mind you, this addiction takes longer. They need to be encouraged to leave for even a year out, out. And that's a major, major victory. These, the people, these 21 people had to literally go for it two years, as long as two, two and a half years, and they're, they're, they're safely out of it, but they have to remain. They have to still work on it. I still have to work on my addiction to this day, so. Is that good enough? Thank you. Vague on the politics there, sorry. <laughs> Uh, my name's Cheryl Bradley, and I'm a citizen of Lethbridge, and I'm, I'm really touched by your presentation and so glad that you're part of the community. I didn't realize what a great part of the community the Sage Clan is. Um, I'm interested in some comments from you on justice. You mentioned there's a street justice which sounds like a hard, almost criminal type of justice. Uh, and you mentioned dealers, and you know who they are, but you don't report them to our traditional justice system, the police. So I'd like to understand your vision of what kind of justice system or model would work in the long term to in some ways stop the supply side as well as dealing with those that are victims of the supply. Is that clear? I'm wondering if there's a Blackfoot way of justice that might apply. It's a, a complicated question, but I'd appreciate your comments. Um. Street justice is um, it's just like gangs. We don't want gangs, okay? We've done well here in Lethbridge, and actually the tribe has done well from not allowing, allowing the gangs to form, okay? But they, it's there. It, you don't really see it much, but you only have your bloods and crips there, but they're made fun of. But they're re it's real, so don't think it's not here yet. And I, I hate, I've used Regina as a, um, as a example most often because I've been to, I've been to these places. I've been to Winnipeg, I've been to Kenora, I've been to Regina, I've been to St. Albert, I've been to uh, uh, Saskatoon, Brandon, and then in the native communities mainly where there are sage clans. They're called bear, we're a division, we're bear clan. I wear a bear clan insignia, and we're part of bear clan. And 
this is places I've seen. And so, um, as far as, you know, knowing the dealers and all in that, uh, even the dealers are sick, all right? Sick in their thought, sick in their, you know, in their way. It's an addiction itself to, to deal. Dealers can't get away from that. Um, yeah, it is, it is criminal. It is very criminal, but that's how you need to survive. Being from the streets, I had to survive a certain way. I was taught not to steal. And I didn't do it much, but I did when I was on the streets to survive, to eat, even to get that next drink, okay? So you survived, that's what I'm saying. We were going to do our best to, to influence that it is wrong. It, it, like I said, we asked those guys, don't, don't go to that area anymore. Don't use in this area. Stay away from these vehicles. Don't go to that area. I'm talking about the shelter. They listened. Reluctantly, angrily, even argumentatively, we got them to move. The right people did it. Not only were we, we fed them nice, we're not politely and everything, but we were able to get after them and they fought us and we got arguments. Guess what? They forgave us. They know, understand why they can't go in that area. Okay, so um, no, how else? I need help. Sage guy needs help. And I know collectively we can all do this. We can all do this. Uh, any part of the question that I missed here? There was quite a... I was just wondering if the uh, if there's a model of justice the, um, that you think we have, uh, we've had two members, two indigenous men, who succeeded through the uh, through the courts, the uh, native justice program, and the uh, provincial. Uh, uh, it does work, drug court. It does work. It has worked for us. And believe me, the indigenous court is actually harder. It's tough. I'm very proud of the person who went through it. He walked with Sage Clan. The other guy, the other one through the drug court is a team lead at the shelter now. They did work. And they, they are more difficult than what you, you have to go through at the jail and through probation. It, I'm very proud of the, of the way they did it. The, it, it, it got to the, it got to them what, how serious it was that they had to change. So I recommend that, more support into that, you know, that they have to, they have to face our community. They have to face themselves, okay? They're forced, that identity is forced on them who they really are, okay? Good enough, thank you. My name is Violet Meekma. I'd like to thank you all for coming today for this very informative and interesting discussion. And especially you, Mark, and your circumstances, your very sad circumstances today. Obviously, this means a great deal to you to be here with us. And thank you for that. I'm wondering if you could provide us with more details for those of us who might be interested in volunteering as to just how you go about who do you get in touch with? And more about how it works as far as um, do you go out in a group at certain times, certain days of the week? Um, is there any security? Just, just more of the logistics, I guess, uh, for those of us who might want to volunteer. Thank you. There is, a, it is, it is, could I safely say it's very secure, what we, it's very safe where we walk out of that bridge. Like I said, it's not Chicago, it's not even Calgary, all right? And it, it's, it's very, we, we walk out together, it's very safe. We're greeted, we're, we're well greeted we're, with, with uh, they're polite to us, you know. So the safety is there. How you can help us out, help us raise money for another... Wagon. Another wagon. <laughs> for, we had Barnabas Talman, our elder, was able to cruise around with us. That was made a great impact. I'd like to see. I'd like to see one of you 
come out and drive with us because it's a long walk. That's what I'm saying, drive. And it's cool to you. And it's have some elder along with us. It worked. And only the three times that he walked, it was it was it made such a great impact. But we were unable to maintain the the, the scooter we had. So, but it, that's a, it's important. Elders are important to still. It may not seem like it, but the, our Blackfoot our Indigenous we, we are still very. Our children are still very. Uh, uh, it makes them think. Whether they're mad at grandma or grandpa, they'll make them think. That's what we got to do: is make them think where they're at, what they're doing, what they're doing with their time, where they put themselves. You know, so it's important. It's important how we get how we get creative in uh, making them come to choice. Okay. Hi, Barb Phillips. Thank you, Mark, for all you've done for our community. And Miranda and Karen, thank you for walking with Sage Clan. My question is, a couple of weeks ago, SACPA uh, sponsored a panel in which one of the members, I guess in layman's terms, his position was Lethbridge has this big, big problem, and it's also part of our provincial government plan, I think, that basically in layman's terms, we just round them up and uh, have a f place sort of where it's a one-way ticket and you don't get out of there. Or I think to quote this gentleman, you die if you don't recover and get clean. Uh, and I guess be a productive, in quotation marks, member of society. So I'd like your comments on that, which... Uh, I think that's pretty counter of what Sage Clan is being is doing, and how do we as a community counteract those people in our community that want to bring this this way of solving Lethbridge's pr houseless situation? What are we to do? And so, your comments on that. Thank you. I would say it's a process. Um, when Sage Clan started, you know, we were uh, we were even called enablers. You know, where oh, you know. Uh, however, you know, as time went on, you know, we realized, you know, you know, one bag lunch is simple thing. One bag lunch per person, and we got arguments, we got fights. Oh, we're hungry, and then even some of the our patrollers. Oh, it's easier to mean Mark, he's hungry. Well, I've been on streets in Calgary, and you only get one of everything. And you choose to live that life. Well, be grateful for what you're getting. Okay, I'm not saying you choose. When I say you choose, you choose to make that drug more important than having food, than taking care of your kids, than going to an appointment. You choose that fix because you need it. That's, you have no choice. That's your only choice. You choose. So they got to realize, I'm choosing this. So discipline is important. From him, I didn't elaborate. I, I, I tried to say something about Mr. Bremner. And discipline is important. We've done it. At, we've proven it at the shelter. And they are listening to discipline. I've become this, this bad guy over there. All of a sudden, here I used to feed them, used to help them all, clothe them, then they know the other part of me. But they started getting bits and pieces of it by saying, no, you can't, you can only allow one bag lunch. You only allow one. And now, they, they don't argue, right? They don't, we don't get that argument. They know they only get one bag lunch. You know, that's just a small part of discipline that started. And then, you know, the Gulf Gardens. We go through there, and people are starting to. We they ask for lunch over here. We run it over to them. Oh, the patrollers are running everywhere, giving bag lunch and stuff. No, we're not running over there. They come get their bag lunch. No, you come and get it. They got mad over that. Expected us to run it over and serve them. No. So you know, it, it's a process. It's going to take time. So we've got to understand that. We've got to understand the little details of be there, walk there, observe. 
something will catch on to you how best how do you best help so the community is a community the, the sober community is a lot stronger than that community that's addicted and homeless believe me you are that influence needs to come out if you really want the city not to decay even more due to the homeless and addiction. There needs to be an effort in that, so. Is that good? Okay. Thank you everyone for being here for this session. Uh, thank you to Mark. My heart goes to your journey and your loss. Thank you to Amy and Miranda on behalf of Sage Clan. Thank you for your words and your dedication, your vulnerability this afternoon. To the attendees, everyone here, everyone watching, you have some work to do following this. I recommend that you access the work of U of L sociology professor, Dr. Apoyaki Tiffany Preet on residential schools, assimilation policies, and understanding that trauma. I recommend that you attend the, when you attend the polls this week leading to ED on Monday, that you look into what leaders and parties are acknowledging these addiction crises and actively working towards sustainable housing initiatives and harm reduction efforts. Reach out to your Lethbridge City Councillors to ensure that there are water stations, cooling stations for the houseless this summer. Join a Sage Clan walk as you've seen this. Donate an evening meal, and most importantly, thank you to all of the words and to recognize the humanity in each other. We are all in community with each other and we all need each other. Next week, June 1st, we have Mark, Mark Warkenton. I was like, am I reading that right? I am. What are the likely impacts of Lethbridge's exhibition's new 80 million agri food hub on our local economy? And I just want to invite Sage Klein to say a closing remark before we go our separate ways. Thank you very much. Uh, just a few things to add. Um, Amy Cran was supposed to be here today, and she is an anthropology student who took the time over the last summer uh, to study the impact that Sage Clan was having on the downtown. So if you do have a chance at any point to hear Amy talk about the results of, of her study and her thesis, um, I would highly encourage you to do that. Uh, if you wish to volunteer with us, we go out Wednesday night Friday night and Sunday afternoon. Evening patrols start at 7.30 from the Pregnancy Center. Uh, and the Sunday patrol starts at 2.30 in the afternoon That's again. Three. three, it's, we're gonna be changing it to three. Oh, yeah. okay. All right, I guess we're changing it to three o'clock. And Sundays are special because it's Muffin Sunday. Um, if you can't walk with us, we also require people to help prepare lunches on Wednesday and Friday evenings, so do reach out to us um, if you're interested in that. And there's also a Facebook group organizing the muffins, so if you're a baker, um, there's nothing that's more appreciated than fresh baked muffins on a Sunday. Um, so thank you all for your wonderful attention. Thank you for caring and taking an act active interest in the people on our streets who are at their most vulnerable and just need a little bit of a helping hand and some understanding now and again. Again, thank you so much for uh, listening to what I had to say. And uh, in, in Peter Weasel Moccasin, uh, somebody may be familiar with him, he's an elder of our, and he has a lot of knowledge of, of our, our traditional cultural ways and societal and, and even our, our spiritual ways. Um, we had asked at the Blackfoot uh, uh, Language Symposium last year, and we've been trying to get a, a new name to, besides homeless addicted, you know, and they came up to the word, Iyokwa, Iyokwa. It's literal meaning is to wait for. And there's, there's a lot of wisdom behind it, there's a lot of, but it's, but um, Peter said the collective, collective. 
what comes behind it is, you know, society is going to, we will feel, we will feel the impact later if we do not do something about this, this, this group of people, if we just let it, if we just let fester or let them to die in it, it'll come back. It'll come around to hurt us, this society, it'll hurt us. So we need to, almost, you're not saying necessarily stop society in, but to wait for, help these people, make an effort to, to uh, help us as a, as a people all move on, move ahead, pick up and move ahead from this. So that's, that's, we try to incorporate that name. Yuchka will be coming out with some t-shirts apparently uh, with the word on it. It's, it's our Blackfoot, it's in the Blackfoot way, so. But I'm very grateful again for allowing us this time to share. Okay, thank you.